Hello and welcome to this presentation on advancements in 3D measurement and inspection software tools from Micro Epsilon. My name is Glenn Wedgebrow and I am the Business Development Manager for Micro Epsilon here in the UK. In this session I will start with a brief reminder of the sensors available from Micro Epsilon capable of 3D measurement before I explain the concept behind our software called 3D Inspect. After this I will run through some of the key inspection tools available and describe how to use the data and set the pass fail criteria along with a couple of application examples before ending with a short summary. Over the last 18 months Micro Epsilon has introduced and updated four product lines capable of 3D measurements. They are the Surface Control 2500 for large area 3D surface inspection the Surface Control 3500 for high precision 3D surface inspection, Reflect Control for 3D inspection on shiny or painted surfaces, and Scan Control, which is our 2D laser line profile sensor and can also generate 3D point clouds. The use of each model is dependent on the type of surface to be measured, its size, and whether that target is moving or static. The sensors are all capable of providing point cloud information using the Genicam and Gigi vision standards. When these sensors were launched, the main focus was on system and vision integrators. Typically, they were able to build or create their own software solutions using these standards with the help of our software developer kit. However, for an end user, this solution would not be so comfortable to use, so we wanted to develop our own software solution for end user integration, which we're calling 3D Inspect. If you have a 3D point cloud data for inspection, you'd certainly have to make some considerations on what to do with that data. The first one might be, how do I get a point cloud evaluated? Or how do I get measurement values from this point cloud? But then it might not be that simple. What about target positioning? Part positions will never be exactly the same, so how would you cope with that? And thirdly, what do I do with the evaluations once I have that data? How do I transfer that data to my device or process? These are all parts of the reason why we have developed 3D Inspect. 3D Inspect provides a standardized way to evaluate 3D point clouds independent of the micro epsilon sensor being used. It takes into consideration acquisition, alignment, evaluation and outputting of the data. So let's introduce 3D Inspect. There are four sections of the user interface which is based on a tab concept. Your first step is always data acquisition or simply acquiring data from the connected sensor. You can also load previously stored or captured 3D files. Second, it's about processing that point cloud data into a suitable coordinate system that you can then work with. Third, configuring the evaluation criteria for your inspection. And last, setting the relevant outputs and results of the inspection tasks that you have made. I'll go through each of these in turn. In the data acquisition tab, you are simply preparing the sensor to acquire and generate the point cloud. The screen gives information specific to the sensor connected, along with timing information that helps determine the total time required for making the measurement. Depending on the type of sensor you have connected, the settings will change to reflect that particular type of sensor. Further to the main sensor settings being directly available for adjustment like exposure and resolution, you can also go deeper with the advanced settings. This gives you access to the Genicam parameters of the sensors and are represented in the same way as other common image processing software. For vision integrators, this should be quite familiar. When data is captured, it is presented in the main 3D view area along with a preview image showing raw data from the sensor without any settings applied. 
and a 2D plot of the captured point cloud which can be sectioned to see the cross profile in X, Y and Z. All the views can be maximized if needed. The display settings fields allows for color adjustment and scaling. This can help visualize and understand the data that you have captured. Whilst lighting control allows you to enhance edges or features even on flat surfaces. But all this is just for your own visual benefit. Once you have captured the data, you then need to adapt it to a position or location that is usable. This is one of the first considerations 3D Inspect incorporates. Typically, the data you capture from your target with a sensor is not necessarily going to be aligned in the way you want to inspect it. There may be background data points, areas of no interest, or that the target is not central to the coordinate system. So we provide various algorithms that can be used to align, reposition, or manipulate the point cloud in both 3D and 2D. By employing pre-processing, you will make applying the evaluation tools later on much easier. For example, the original data has been captured on a tilt. The grey image shows the input or captured data and the yellow colour indicates the captured plane showing that tilt. Plane alignment can be used to correct this tilt and the adjusted output data is now shown in green. Why should you correct the tilt? Because if you were looking for a high or a low point on the surface, you could end up detecting the highest or lowest point of that tilt, not necessarily the highest or lowest point of the surface. Another example is where the captured target is not always at the same base elevation. Maybe the capture position has some variability. Position correction can be used to adjust the point cloud to a reference point. The point cloud is now aligned with the Y axis. Contour fit is a bit like pattern matching so that the shape or contour of the data set selected is used to reposition the target each time. For example, if targets are presented in slightly different orientations down the line, they can be adjusted and corrected using the contour fit. New from version 1.5 of the software includes filters to improve the point cloud with options available for various averaging types. Low pass filters are also available that can remove base noise from the point cloud but maintains the target's geometry. Alternatively, high pass filters work in opposite effect to remove geometry and focus more on the surface detail. Here we have a computer mouse where the shape is removed by the high pass filter. Applying evaluation criteria to curved or shaped targets is always a challenge, so trend removal can also be used to remove tilts from a target. Note the reduction in the range of the Z scale. Similarly, polynomial functions can be applied to remove curves so that the target appears flattened, making the inspection or evaluation tools much easier to apply. Point clouds can be tidied up by using functions like erosion to remove unwanted points at the edge of the cloud. But be careful as holes that are meant to be in your target could also be enlarged. Similarly, you can use closing to fill in the gaps in missing point data that may have been caused through shadowing or poor surface quality. A new function available is wave compensation, which is particularly useful in capturing the 3D data from a scan control device, where there is a possibility that the point cloud from one profile to the next may not be in exactly the same vertical position due to the methods used to move the sensor or the target. Using the new wave compensation allows us to remove that underlying bounce from the data. And staying on the 2D theme, you can also insert profile sections to the point cloud to give a cross-sectional 2D view of the data. This would then allow 2D evaluation tools to also be applied. So 
So far, everything we have gone through was about preparing the point cloud to be evaluated or inspected. Now that you've corrected the position or selected the points you want to evaluate, we can then start to build up the inspection points and get on with the main measurement task. The evaluation tools are the third step in the process. Think of this step as obtaining the data you want to use for your final inspection or decision making criteria. The tools provided will allow you to find, inspect and measure features of the point cloud and this can be done using 3D evaluations or in 2D, whichever works best for your application. I'll talk through some of these now. Here we are using a plane fit to locate a surface on the point cloud. The section of target to set the plane is defined using a region of interest. The points found within that region are then used to create a plane which is then fitted across those points. With each tool, a number of potential data values associated with the tool are available for selection. If activated with the tick box, these values can then be used in the final decision making criteria. Cylinder fit uses information from the curvature of the selected data to form a cylinder from those points. These types of tools are useful as they can extrapolate sizes of a shaft or curvature of a surface from the limited point information available. In 3D, spherical object tools can be very useful, particularly for location and coordinate information. The sphere fit creates a ball from the available data points. Extreme points within regions of interest can also be found and set with values provided in X, Y and Z. Values that can then be used or combined for further measurement tasks. Center of gravity can be used to obtain positional information from isolated sections within the point cloud. Here we are looking at positions in X, Y and Z of connector pins. For measuring dimensions, we are also able to employ pads that will find rectangular features and gives measurements from the encapsulated region. Note the blue points indicate the edges found by 3D Inspect so that the width and height can be obtained. The same also applies to circular objects and you can choose to look inside or outside of the selected area depending on whether you have a feature or a hole to measure. Again, the blue dots indicate where 3D Inspect is taking the measuring points from. Sometimes the geometry of the target will be more complicated and the measurements you want to take could be from points that do not easily fit into a rectangular pad or circle. For these scenarios, edge tools can be employed to find specific edges of the target, which can then be combined with other values from other programs to get the required measuring points. A new evaluation tool released in version 1.5 of 3D Inspect is that for welds or seams. The tool evaluates all points above a plane given volume, area and the number of points detected as values for use in the final evaluation. It also indicates the position of the highest point on the bead. And I mentioned earlier that 2D tools And I mentioned earlier that 2D tools are also now being implemented within the 3D Inspect software. Because although you've captured the 3D point cloud, I in mentioned many cases, the edge tool you still and extreme want to tool, the that you will probably need to combine edge values and positions with other evaluation results. Combined objects can be used to build those new values. For example, outputting the distance between two detected objects. Here we are measuring the height between the plane and the highest point. Or we can measure angles between two planes or other lines. Intersection points can be determined where planes or lines cross. And it is possible to measure a perpendicular distance from the plane or the line. Your final step in the setup is the consideration of what to do with the measurement and inspection data that you've just created. Are you looking to get pass-fail signals? Do you want the data output directly to your system? 
3D Inspect has options for both. Processing 3D point clouds and evaluations is intensive. Our 3D sensors are communicating with Genicam and Gig Vision to a PC. And whilst 3D Inspect is designed to run on a normal PC, we do offer our own industrial performance unit that can run 3D Inspect and also provides gateway options for communication to your own device through industrial field bus networks. Output and results in 3D Inspect gives an overview of the measurements being made. You can set additional filters and perform calculations on the measurements as well as assign the pass-fail criteria in the OK, Not OK tab. Furthermore, you can also select a communications protocol for transmitting the values to your PLC or other suitable device. So as an example of control communication, we have a surface control 3D mounted on a universal robot's UR3 cobot, and have programmed the surface control to detect the position in XYZ of the highest point, and then reposition that to the center of the surface control's measuring field. Each time the target is adjusted, the surface control is triggered to find the target, and surface control then reports the new coordinates to the robot via Modbus, which in turn repositions itself. These are the sorts of functions that could be useful for pick and place applications. To finish, we have a couple of applications where 3D Inspect has been utilized. The first is orientation of a component. In this case, a small ceramic part must be orientated the right way up. There are only small inclusions on one side that differentiates the sides and the part was previously manually inspected. With 3D Inspect, we are able to automate the inspection, detect the part by its contour, and look for the inclusions that determine the orientation. The second application I have is for connector block inspection. Connectors have numerous inspections to perform. In this example, we're determining the pin position is central to the terminal to ensure there are no bent or missing pins. This is often a task performed with line sensors but with 3D you can now inspect the pin position in all three dimensions relating to the casing. Three D Inspect has been designed to provide a platform for Micro Epsilon's three D sensor portfolio. The software helps with the processing of the point cloud data and includes tools for inspection in three D and two D. The ability to set OK, not OK signals and communications for data transfer makes it a comfortable package for users to get started and to develop their inspection routines. You can find more information about our products on our website, plus video content on YouTube and of course on LinkedIn. Please make sure you like, follow and subscribe. Thank you.